Let me begin by conveying my best wishes and greetings to you on Gabon's presidency of the Security Council for this month. The topic chosen for the debate is extremely important, not just for Africa, but all of us in the context of global fight against terrorism. I thank Ms. Ghada Fati Wali, Executive Director of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. His Excellency, Mr. Adoye, Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the African Union Commission, and Mr. Paul Simon Handy, Regional Director for East Africa and Representative to the African Union Institute for Security Studies for their valuable contributions in reaching today's debate. Mr. President, in recent years, terrorist and armed groups have been making deep inroads by exploiting security gaps and fragile governance institutions in the continent, particularly in the Horn of Africa, Sahel, and East and Central Africa. These regions have remained vulnerable to money laundering and terrorist financing. Terrorist and armed groups are increasingly funding their activities through illegal exploitation of natural resources and trafficking of wildlife and extortion, etc., amongst other well-known activities. The terrorist groups have also found new ways to finance their activities by exploiting the rapid development of information and communication technology, as well as other technologies related to financial transactions, encryption, varied modes of transportation and delivery. Preventing these inimical outfits from accessing financial resources, therefore, is crucial to effectively counter their violent attacks. While some states lack the legal operational frameworks and necessary counterfinancing of terrorism capabilities, capacities, there are other states that are clearly guilty of aiding and supporting terrorism and willfully providing financial assistance and safe havens to terrorists. While we must enhance capacities of the former, the international community must collectively call out the latter and hold them accountable to such double speak. Mr. President, the global fight against terrorism cannot succeed without conscious and coordinated efforts to counter financing of terrorism. And nor can the global fight against armed groups. In this context, allow me to flag the following key aspects for this Council's consideration. First, we need to recognize the fact that terrorism, like armed conflicts, is expanding in Africa. Al-Qaeda and ISIL-affiliated terrorist groups in different parts of Africa have gathered significant strength in the recent years, thriving on the illegal mining of artisan gold, rare minerals, gemstones, uranium, coal, timber, etc., through illegal trade networks facilitated by transnational criminal networks. Terrorist groups such as Al-Shabaab have put in place elaborate revenue collection networks to support their terrorist activities. If left unaddressed, Terrorism may seriously jeopardize peace prospects in several parts of Africa, which is already ravaged by armed conflicts. Second, as pointed out by our African colleagues in the Security Council, ISIL and Al-Qaeda-linked and inspired groups in Africa are embedding themselves in multiple domestic conflicts, attempt to, to influence and control the political agenda. Engaging them in national reconciliation will only provide legitimacy to terrorism as well give them access to necessary financial means and resources. This will be a self-defeating goal. What we need is a zero-tolerance policy towards all forms of terrorism, irrespective of its motivations. Third, the African Union, the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, and the states of the Central African Economy and Monetary Community, CIMAC, have been playing an important role in combating financing of terrorism. The initiatives such as the Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa, regulations against money laundering and terrorist financing of CIMAC have helped in creating institutional frameworks in the African states. 
These regional and sub-regional measures need to be strengthened further in line with the standards prescribed by the Financial Action Task, Task Force. Fourth, the FATF has been promoting effective implementation of legal, regulatory, and operational measures for combating money laundering, terrorist financing, and other related threats to the integrity of the international financial system. It's important that member states, including African states, bring their anti-money laundering and terror financing monitoring frameworks at par with international standards, including those promoted by FATF. We also believe more cooperation between the FATF and the various UN entities, including the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism, will benefit member states. Fifth, the international community needs to enhance assistance to African countries to strengthen capacities to fight illegal exploitation of natural resources and trade. Furthermore, a violence-free Africa would need to be freed from the shackles of external forces driving exploitation of natural resources in Africa. In this regard, India has been calling for a development paradigm that is Africa-led and Africa-owned and centered on the progress and development of the people of Africa. India has been contributing proactively to further international cooperation to combat financing of terrorism at regional and international level. In 2018, India contributed 550,000 US dollars to the UN Ox programs targeting capacity building of countries in East and Southern Africa. In 2021 too, we have contributed $1 million to further strengthen this efforts. Sixth, we need to support the national and regional security initiatives, as well as capacity building efforts towards effective border surveillance and security. African security initiatives such as Multinational Joint Task Force, South African Development Community Mission in Mozambique, and African Union Transition Mission in Somalia have proven their success in countering terrorism. These are Africa's homegrown solutions, led by African countries who have better understanding of their issues. The international community should provide sustainable and adequate financial and logistical support to such regional security initiatives. Lastly, the continuing lack of representation of Africa in the permanent category of the UN Security Council's membership is a historical injustice that needs to be corrected sooner than later. Given that more than half of the Security Council's work is focused on Africa, India has been consistently calling for greater representation of Africa through an increase in both permanent and non-permanent categories of this Council's membership in line with the Isulvini Consensus and the CERTA Declaration. Mr. President, India has been at the forefront of the global fight against terrorism. As a country which itself has been a victim of state-sponsored cross-border terrorism for nearly past three decades, India is acutely aware of the socio-economic and human cost of terrorism. In 1996, long before the adoption of Resolution 1373, India took the initiative to pilot the draft Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism with the objective of providing a comprehensive legal framework to combating terrorism. We have signed and ratified all the major conventions and protocols on terrorism adopted by the UN and are part of all major global initiatives, including FATF. As the chair of the Counterterrorism Committee this year, India would be hosting its special meeting in Mumbai and New Delhi later this month on 28th and 29th of October. I reiterate our invitation to member states to participate in this upcoming meeting and hope that it will contribute positively towards creating a global architecture which is fit for purpose and effectively responds to the new tech rule tools deployed by terrorists and its backers against open diverse and pluralistic societies. Thank you, Mr. President.